thing. Typically, and if, you know, if you have children, please, uh, if they go to school, they're all going to get told that the solar system looks something like this. Let, let me try to erase this. Okay, that the solar system looks something like this. Uh, that, that, that the sun is in the middle, and the solar system, and, and in my school, we even, in a, even had a little machine with a little thing, a little crank you spun, and the earth uh, went around the sun with the moon and everything. And uh, so they tell you, oh yeah, that's the sun, and then the, the planets go around like this in an elliptical course, and depending on uh, the interaction of all the planets, it's either elongated or more round, or you got all the planets like this in the solar system. Well, actually, that is absolutely incorrect. Okay? Uh, the thinking of the solar system in this matter is equivalent to thinking that the Earth is flat. Um, the solar system does not behave that way at all. In fact, the solar system uh, uh, it behaves in a completely different way since the sun is moving through space and the planets are flying around the sun generating this huge vortices as it follows the equator of the sun. It, that is a completely different picture. All right? It goes from flat to spacious, to movement through space. And that makes a big difference. All of a sudden, you start to see that even planetary motion, solar motions around the galaxy, galactic motion, supercluster motion, and so on, all have this elliptical, vortecular dynamics of space. They all have this torque dynamic through space. And, uh, and if you look at the Earth on this vortex, you could say that this is 2000, you know, 2000 for instance, and this would be then uh, 2000, 2001, and then this would be 2002. And this would be, uh, this is extremely long distance apart. Millions and millions and millions and millions of miles apart. There's nothing in there. The, the, you know, the planets do not come back onto their path. They don't. If they did, we most likely would have the same set of information over and over and over, like a broken record. Okay? And, uh, and we, we probably get real bored. Uh, uh, it would be like Groundhog Year, you know? Let's go back to the analogy of Einstein's field equation of the trampoline, trampoline curving to generate gravity. So basically Einstein said, gravity is the result of space-time curving like the surface of a trampoline. And basically what I say, what we say in this paper is that yes, and when space-time curve, it doesn't just curve, but it curls, just like water going down the drain, and that generates spin, angular momentum. And that's the source of the spin of all things. And that is an appropriate way to actually describe physics of angular momentum in the universe. So, when we add torque to space-time, the solution gives us a very different picture than a perfect sphere. It generates a torus structure, okay? Which is a sphere with two holes in the middle at the north and south pole. And because it has Coriolis forces, Coriolis forces are the forces that makes Water rotates in one direction in the North Hemisphere and in the other in the South Hemisphere. That makes hurricanes rotate in the opposite direction. Um, that makes uh, plasma dynamics on the Sun rotate in the opposite direction. Because Coriolis forces were added to the equation, so what we did is we added a term for torque and the Coriolis forces as a secondary uh, rank uh, tensor on the space-time manifold. We, re, the result is a double torus structure, a double torus manifold, 
that has this dynamic, uh, which is uh, viewed here from above uh, as uh, a rotating uh, yin-yang sign, if you'd like. 